When originally discussing first order filters, we spoke about how a first order filter has sort of a fixed quality in the sense that you cannot make by changing the components R or C in this circuit, you cannot adapt sort of the roll off of this filter. Now, one way you can do actually do to make this filter more discriminating would be to cascade it in the sense of taking this existing low pass filter and then actually adding in another low pass filter past it so that you now have two particular low pass filters. And so whereas this black line here might be a particular low pass filter, you can then filter the behavior again and you might get a roll off that looks like that. And you can continue this process uh, on down and down for as many filters as you want and you will find that in each stage there will be additional filtering that is applied to the circuit. So if you did want to create a low pass filter that had a cutoff, let's say somewhere in this range, you could do so and increase the quality of it by just repeatedly filtering and filtering the signal. But for this particular circuit, what will happen is while you might get a sharper roll off in between your signals, you will actually in each time slightly move the uh, cutoff frequency from each filter. Because remember, the cutoff frequency is determined at a particular point in terms of the roll off. And each time you filter the signal, that roll off gets to be a bit sharper, and thus you move your corner frequency slighter. But it is possible to increase the quality of a low pass filter by repeatedly filtering it. This type of cascading works with any type of filter. So here we have second order filters, and this might be here filter number one. And this here might be filter number two. And we can see that at the output of the first filter, which is across the resistor, we can attach a new filter, which has its own inductor, capacitor, and resistor. And then we can get some sort of final V out. And so again, as before, with our first order filter, let's say that this was a, uh, band, a band pass filter. And so after our first stage, maybe our filter looks like this. And then after the completion of our second stage, we have increased the quality and the amount of filtering produced by the signal. And it gets to be a bit tighter. This, this bandwidth region, which is crucial to our quality, actually tightens up. So sometimes maybe it's, it's cheaper to build multiple filters and cascade them because you don't have to as finely tune your components or you do not need components so large uh, to achieve the desired amount of quality. But one thing we're not talking about here is that with each stage, with each stage that this passes through, there's an additional impact on the phase of the signal, not necessarily just what happens to the magnitude. And so this signal can have a much larger phase delay depending upon the number of filtering stages that it passes through. Finally, one useful way is that we can actually cascade filters, simple filters to make more complex filters. So let's imagine that these are both RC filters and this is a low pass filter and this is a high pass filter and they each have their own corner frequency where this one begins working at the high pass level and this one begins working at the low pass level. If we sent our signal through here, depending on how we select our low pass and high pass values, we can actually end up creating a band pass circuit. So for this example, let's assume that our high pass value is actually a lot less than our low pass value. So let's put, just for the sake of argument, our low pass value out here. And so if we were looking at the transfer function of this eventual circuit, the signal would have to pass through and then it would die off. And so we would retain sort of all of the things that are in here. But then after it passes through the low pass filter, it will then go through the high pass filter. And so let's imagine that our high pass limit is right here. And so the, the transfer function for our high pass filter is gonna look a lot different and it's gonna behave that way. So now, whereas this region over here was originally sort of uh, kept by the low pass filter, 
our high pass filter is going to end up destroying all of these elements. And so what you get in the end is actually a band pass filter. So everything within this region here is retained based on the order of these two filters. Now when you have uh, cascaded filters and even some other components such as op amps, you can create even more uh, sort of complex circuits from simple components. So imagine that we have a low pass filter here and for the sake of argument let's look at the transfer function of that particular low pass filter and let's say that it begins here and so we'll do our low pass filter sort of in red and have it with a nice roll off there and then we'll have a high pass filter in blue and we will say that our high pass filter begins out here in this region and the transfer function for our high pass filter might look something like that and because what's in blue all these things get passed and then or excuse me in red and then all these things in blue and then they get summed together by the op amp what the final output that we get is actually the combination of both of these signals and this ends up being a band reject filter. So there's a region in between these two signals that is actually rejected between our bounds of the low pass and high pass signals. And again there are lots of circuits where we can cascade op amps and increase their quality and increase their cutoff but there, there's never a free lunch. There's always going to be some sort of trade-off in terms of the number of components and the phase delay and the complexity but cascading op amps helps you modularize your design so that you're not super fine-tuning individual components and that you can keep adding on different orders of filters and different numbers of filters to get the desired result.